I really didn't think I was going to get through this video and not cry. Who would have thought? Hi, I'm Rai and I worked for the Disney Cruise Line for three contracts between two ships for about a year and a half. This video has been in the making for a about a year. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been a year. So while I want to be authentic in the thoughts and the feelings and just kind of everything I went through while I was on the Disney Cruise Line, I also don't want to burn any bridges or sound disrespectful because Mickey's always watching. So um, with that, buckle in because this is probably gonna be a very long video. So had I made this video immediately after debarking, um, I'm sure I would have had a lot of different things to say. I'm gonna be uploading this video on the day of my debark anniversary. Um, so when I talk to new people about how I used to work for Disney Cruise Line, I do mention how wonderful it is to meet new people from all over and how you get to travel. One thing that is not lost on me is how not fun it is to work for Disney Cruise Line. And that surprises people because obviously on social media you only show the cool parts about how you got to go to this island or got to do this thing, but you don't talk about how shitty it is. And believe me, that's any job anywhere. That's not specific to Disney Cruise Line, but the big thing to understand here is everything is very heightened. Everything is faster. It's just the mentality of the way things are. I don't know how. Time doesn't behave normally when you work on a cruise ship. A three day cruise feels like a week, a week long relationship feels like a month, and a four month contract will feel like years. It's hard to remind yourself that it, everything's not as intense as you think it is. Basically, your life becomes your job. And with that, it becomes very difficult to not let your actual life interfere with your job. When you work and live in the same place, that becomes very difficult. And I struggled with that from the very beginning. It was really hard for me to differentiate my job and my life on the ship. Hi, me in the future. Remember this? This is a thing you did a lot. Um, because it is all one package deal, basically. I won't say it was all bad. Again, got to meet some incredible people, traveled to some amazing places I would have never gone to otherwise. So when I first embarked, I embarked onto the Fantasy uh, in 2017. And that ship only goes to the Bahamas, Caribbean area uh, every seven days. And that's it. It doesn't do anything else. It only goes to those certain ports every other week. And that gets old very quickly very, very quickly. I knew from the very beginning that I wanted to be on the ship that went to Alaska, which was the Wonder. But as I got to understand how ship life works and operations and everything, I learned that my chances of transferring to that ship were very slim. Typically people like the Wonder because it goes to Alaska, so jobs are really hard to come by. It's not very often that you just get to transfer the ship that you want. Well, I ended up meeting a boy. We actually filled out paperwork so he and I would have matching contracts. The only way that this would work would be to transfer us both to The Wonder. It just so happened there were there was an opening for each of our jobs, so my next contract I would be starting on The Wonder. He eventually cheated on me with Mickey Mouse. But that's a story for another time. <laughs> but yeah, he ended up cheating me with a performer and that was that. I had found out before I embarked the ship. So, I had a choice. Despite what happened, I wasn't gonna let him or anyone else for that matter ruin my experience going to Alaska. I could stay home and move on with my life or I could get on the ship and go to Alaska. Obviously, chose the latter. But going back on the ship really did teach me a lot about myself, what I was able to overcome, uh, to handle, to deal with, whatever you wanna call it. I grew as a person, yeah, you could say that, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it was hard, it sucked, but I will say I am definitely a lot healthier mentally and physically now that I'm on land and, and not living that kind of life anymore. In my experience, the value that Disney Cruise Line places on mental health of their crew members really is precarious. And I say that very hesitantly because again, I don't want to come off pointing fingers. So this might have to be another video where I do a little bit more research and give you some receipts. Again, in my experience, they don't put a high value on your mental health. The minute you become not essential, they basically kick you off the ship. That's the, that's the black and white of it. I will say in case of an emergency, there is a number you can call, but it's not a consistent counselor. It's not somebody who has experience working on cruise ships and it's like a one-off deal. You don't get follow-up care. It's, it's, it's very like in the moment that uh, it just did not work for me. Like it helped, but in the long run, it was not a good 
plan. But again, that will have to be its own video. There's a lot I can cover on that. After I'd crossed the Panama Canal and I went dog sledding in Alaska for my birthday, I had basically done everything I had come to do. Uh, I had no reason to continue working for Disney Cruise Line. And on top of that, I really wasn't making enough to justify working there in the first place. As a lifeguard, I was only making six-ish an hour, working 70 hours a week. Except I really wouldn't even call myself a lifeguard. We were glorified babysitters. Most of the time, we weren't even trusted to make decisions like there was lightning too close to the ship, or the wind speed was too high and unsafe for the water slide to be operational, or if the ship was rocking too much and the water is literally splashing out of the pool, to be able to say, hey, the guests probably shouldn't be in the water, it's not safe. We weren't allowed to make those calls. That had to come from somebody higher up, usually somebody in the office, downstairs, not paying any attention. If you really want to hear about that part of cruise line, the, the lifeguard specific part, leave a comment down below. Yeah, it, that needs to be its own video because I could talk for days about how that worked or lack thereof. On land, I'd be making like $14 an hour depending if I was lifeguarding at the lake, at the university, or if I was teaching. Over double what I was making on the cruise line. Like that's not good. Granted, you do have room and board taken care of, but still. I hear you asking, how in the world do they pay you $6 an hour if it's below minimum wage. It's a great question. They flag their ships in the Bahamas. So that means they follow Bohemian law. And that goes for anything on the ship, not just wages, but also any criminal investigation as well. I don't think that's fair whatsoever for a lot of reasons. And this just doesn't go for uh, Disney. This goes for cruise lines in general. They do a lot to make the most money off of the backs of their crew members. So even though they're paying for your room and board, you still have things like if you want to get snacks or merchandise on the ship, if you want to consume alcohol, uh, those are all extra things you can charge to your account, like internet. Internet is something deemed as a luxury, I guess. Uh, if a crew member wants to have internet, you have to pay $20 per 500 megabytes. That shit heads up. <laughs> Let me just tell you right now, half my paycheck was going to stuff like that. and. I wasn't saving any money. There was no justification for me to continue doing cruise line after I had done Alaska, basically. It was time to go home. So another hand in the reason why I wanted to resign was because I had worked for the company prior, I worked for Disneyland at Disney World, I thought I had a good understanding of what it would be like to work for Disney Cruise Line. No, <laughs> wrong, very wrong. If you watching this are familiar with what it's like to be a cast member in the theme parks, basically just throw everything you learned in traditions out the window. On the ships, you're a crew member not a cast member. And fun fact, if you call yourself a cast member and you're clearly not a performer, people will look at you funny because if you are a cast member on the Disney Cruise Line, that means you are a performer on the Walt Disney Theater stage. If you display your blue Disney ID backstage like you would normally in a theme park, you look like an asshole. There is no reason for you to have your, your blue ID on the cruise line because you're not a cast member. You are given a crew ID for the ship itself. But going back to your blue ID, you are given one but with no picture. If you put your year pin on from working in the parks on your Disney Cruise Line ID before you've been in, on the Disney Cruise Line for a year, you'll get funny looks. Kind of going back to the, the job itself though, big part of it is just you have no free will and what little freedom you do have is controlled in just so many different ways and not by you. <laughs> for example, your schedule. It's created by your coordinator and your coordinator may be there for a month and then the next month you get a new coordinator. So there's inconsistencies. Your schedule is never the same between two coordinators. And that matters because your schedule controls when you eat, when you sleep, when you have time to go to costuming to get a new shirt, when you have time to call your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever off the ship in the appropriate time zone, or even to get off the ship for a couple hours to get some fresh air and some sunlight and some decent food. Because not being able to get off the ship for a week or, or even more sometimes really gets to you. And on top of that, there are even more rules dictating what you can and can't do while you're even on the ship. Depending on your job, you might not be able to even just walk around in a guest area. You are confined to crew areas only unless given explicit permission. Now I know I want to make a separate video on this because there are a lot of rules crew members have to follow when working on a cruise ship like this, and then specifically with Disney. For example, I signed a contract stating that I had certain privileges while working on this cruise ship. I was allowed to uh, walk around against areas in my off time. I could go to the movies, the theater. I could even go up to the top decks and get quick service food. But for some reason, uh, we were required to ask our leaders to, for permission to be able to do those things, the food thing. I could go to the movies, that's fine. But whenever I wanted to go get food, 
I would have to ask permission, and I was usually denied, even though I had a signed contract stating it was well within my privileges. And that was because I was technically ranked as a petty officer. So you're damn right I was petty about it. Because <laughs> sometimes you just want to go up to deck nine in your sweatpants and get some hot chocolate. That's not a thing you can do because you'll get in trouble. You'll actually get reprimanded if you go into areas you're not supposed to be, if you're not in Disney look, it's a whole thing, it's a lot. Think about it this way. If you lived at your office, your job, whatever it happens to be, imagine you lived at that building and in your off time, you were not allowed to do anything else without having explicit permission. You were only allowed to hang out in the back rooms where nobody could see you. That's the reality that some crew members have to live. It's not like working in the theme parks where you can go in on your day off and eat churros and ride Space Mountain. One, you don't get days off. Two, you come second to the guests. And in that environment, I understand. They're paying a lot of money to be there. They should be able to enjoy the amenities that come with cruising. But it really sucks when you feel like you have to hide in your own home. Because remember, some crew members have up to 12 month contracts. Like that is their life. And I do understand some people prefer that lifestyle. And that's fine. Good on you. Not me. I could not stand it. Ooh, this is depressing. It's a different way of living. It's just, I, I can't explain it better than I'm doing it now, which is probably not a good job. And my big issue with that was it's not readily available. Like there's not a lot of people talking about it. So here I am talking about it. And by doing that, I fear that I have put a target on my back. I really hope this doesn't burn bridges with the Walt Disney Company. Because I don't want this to negatively affect me in the future should I want to return, not to Cruise Line, but to Disney in general. People shouldn't be punished for their opinions and things. And if there's no information about what it's like to work on a Disney cruise ship online, and I have the insight, I'm going to share that, positive or negative. I just think it's important that these topics are talked about and shared because not everyone has a platform to do so. If you have questions about what it was like to live on the Disney Cruise Line, I would love to make a Q&A video. That's something I wanted to do for ages. So if you have any questions about anything, leave a comment down below. Um, I do wanna make a separate video just for that. But again, I'm still gonna make more videos dedicated to certain aspects of ship life. Thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you guys real soon.